Here's a little introduction to ratio and proportion. The ratio of A to B is A over B. Sometimes you'll see it written with a colon in between, three colon four, like the chances of winning or losing a, a golf game, that sort of thing. And you can write three fourths or any other fraction as a decimal, and that's still considered to be a ratio. A proportion, on the other hand, is what you get when you put an equal sign between two fractions. If this is a true proportion, meaning uh, A over B actually does equal C over D, then we have something remarkable. And here it is. You may notice that 3 sevenths and 12 28ths are equal. And here's a little hint, uh, 3 times 4 is 12 and 7 times 4 is 28, and that's how, that's how they're equal. That's why they're equal. And, but notice, this doesn't tell us to do anything. It's simply a statement. A statement is either true or false. This statement is true. And how you can tell is start with one denominator and multiply it by the numerator on the other side. And you get 7 times 12, which is 84. And then do the other one, the denominator on the right times the numerator on the left. And you get 84 again. And in general, if A, time, if A over B is equal to C over D, if that's a true statement, then guess what? that A times D must equal B times C. Sometimes you may have heard this called cross multiplying because if you draw a line from A to D and a line from B to C, it makes a little cross there. So just as a caveat, this is not how you multiply A over B and C over D. That would just be A times C over B times D. When you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. Cross multiplying is allowed only when you have an equal sign between two fractions. If one side of the equation is like a whole number, like 12, you can just put 12 over 1, and now you've got a fraction ratio on both sides. One of the things that this is good for is figuring out, for example, let's say you have a 5 by 8 inch photograph, and you want to enlarge it so that it's 10 inches wide. How long should it be? in order to keep it in, quote, proportion. Yeah, and the answer is you can use proportions. Now, this one's pretty easy. You'll probably notice that, that if you multiply 5 by 2, you get 10. So we're expecting the answer to be 8 times 2, which is 16. And you will see that's exactly what happens. In fact, there are eight different proportions we can get from this picture, all of which will allow us to solve the problem for x. One of them is my favorite, 5 over x on one side and 10, excuse me, 5 over 8 on one side and 10 over x on the other side. You could also write 5 over 10 and the other side, 8 over x. You can write x over 8 on one side and the other side would have to be 10 over 5. And finally, uh, x over 10 would have to equal 8 over 5, as long as they correspond. What you are not allowed to do, for example, is to say, make a fraction out of the top and the side of the other one. So 5 over x is not going to get you where you need to go. And there are four others here. Uh, in fact, if you just switch the left side and the right side, you can probably see what they are. Now, let's see how we solve this. We, I like to pick this one because it's the easiest one for me. I find x and its partner is on the other side of the equal sign and the other side of the fraction bar. So this is going to be x times 5, which we typically write 5x. And the other side has to be 8 times 10. You don't actually have to figure out what 8 times 10 is, really. And sometimes you will. Sometimes you may even know what it is. But for example, with your calculator, all you have to do is 8 times. And look at every single number you enter, 8 times 10. Then just say divided by 5, and it's going to give you that 16 that we were expected. Cool. Sometimes the answers are not so simple because the numbers are not as agreeable. For example, if you wanted to enlarge your photo from 5 by 8 to 13 by something, now you've got a little more work to do. Yeah, you could say that 5 times 2 and something, I don't know. But the easiest way to do it, typically, is to make the proportion. My favorite, again, is 5 over 8 equals 13 over x. Find x, find its partner, cross multiply. 5x equals 8 times 13. And then x is going to be 8 times 13 divided by 5, which you can verify is 20.8.
good news. These rectangles don't have to be actual rectangles. You can use them to assist you in setting up something. For example, suppose six painters can paint seven houses in 30 days. At, this, at that rate, how many houses can 10 painters paint in 30 days? What you have to do is assign, for example, the top to be the painters and the right side to be houses. Six painters, seven houses, 10 painters, I don't know how many houses. And from that, you can get a proportion to estimate how many houses that can be. So again, my favorite one is just six over seven equals 10 over X, cross multiply, six X equals 70, X must be 70 over six. And if you want to reduce it by dividing both sides by, by top and bottom by two, you can, you don't have to. I would just go to my calculator and for purposes of getting it done quickly. I just say 70 divided by six because it doesn't matter if it's in lowest terms or not. And you'll notice sometimes it doesn't come out even and you're gonna to have to round it off to some degree of accuracy. Most likely I will ask you to round it off to two decimal places. So that six would be either remaining a six or turn into a seven. And it does go to a seven because the digit to the right of that is just above five. It only has to be five or more. All right, proportions are sometimes used to predict future results based on past performance. Suppose the Spurs, the Spurs, for example, begin the season winning nine and losing five of their first 14 games. At that rate, well, they won nine out of 14. So the winning, the, the winning number of games that they're gonna win, it can be estimated, sportscasters do this all the time. There's 82 games in the season, They've won nine out of 14. How many will they win out of 82 at that rate? And the only way to find out if they do it is to wait for the season to come to be over. So this point is going to be X is going to be up here. So X times 14, which you write 14 X must equal nine times 82. And you can verify that that's going to be nine times 82 divided by 14. Just be sure you look at every key that you click on or, or press it with your finger. Nine times 82 divided by 14. I looked at every single number. I get 52.71. That goes on forever. It eventually repeats. But we're going to have to round it off to something. So I would round this off to 53 games simply because it's, it's a game and you're either going to win it or you're going to lose it. For your homework tonight, check your campus mail.